In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make an easily customizable dialog box system in Unity in around 15 minutes. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new image, and this will represent the border of our dialog box. So we can call this border image, and we could just uh, have this stretch to all corners at the bottom. We can set the right to be 20, same for the left, and set the height to something like 250. We can bring this up by 20 units. Now with our border image, we're going to simply duplicate it and set its duplicate to a child of the border image. This will represent the inner. This image will represent the insides of our dialog box. So we can set the right to be 10 units, the left 10 units, top and bottom also 10 units. And to help us kind of um, distinguish which is which, we can set the color to be a bit darker. Now what we're going to do inside the dialog box inner, we're going to add in two text mesh pro elements. So we can call our new text object name display. And now what we're going to do is quickly duplicate our name display, have it stretch at the very bottom, set the height to be close to our uh, name display here. So just stretch it over like this and we can subtract 10 from the height. So there's a little bit of spacing between. We could set our name display to be on auto size, have it uh, aligned to the middle. And for our second text, we can change this to dialog contents. And we can set the size to something smaller. So like, so let's keep it at 30. Oh, and also the reason why there's an outline is because they have that um, enabled in the actual uh, font material. This is optional. I just do this for the looks. Now next up, we're going to create a new image. And this will be our little indicator for uh, the player on when they can skip. So we can call this skip indicator and we can anchor this to the bottom right. Set the size to 32 by 32 and set the position, you know, like a little bit offset from the border. So negative five units to the left and five units up. So for the skip indicator, I am using a little down arrow sprite that I made. Uh, the This down arrow sprite will be in the description if you want to get it, but it is pretty easy to make. The application I used uh, to make um, these sprites that you see in my textures folder is Piskel. It's a free software that you can use online or you can download the application. Now the next thing we're going to make is a new image and this will represent the face of our speaker. So we can call this speaker face. And we can just anchor this at the top left, set the width to 200 units, set the height to 200 units, set the position to 220. And this looks pretty good. So now we can work on the functionality of our dialog box. So in the assets folder, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this scripts. And we're also going to create another folder and call this subjects. And the reason why we're making a subjects folder, uh, you'll know after we create our first class. And the first class we're going to create is called, going to be called subject. And this will be a scriptable object that will contain all the data we need to set the style of our dialog box to fit the character that is speaking. So now in Visual Studio, we can get rid of our start and update method, replace model behavior with scriptable object. And we're going to create four variables. The first variable is going to be a public string of the subject name. So the name of our speaker. The next variable will be a color and this will represent the border color so our so when our subject is speaking what what uh, color do we want to set our dialog box border to fit the character of our speaker now for the next variable we're going to create a public color and this will represent the color of the insides of our dialog box so we can just call this inner color and for our last variable this will store a reference to our uh, uh, speaker's face so a public sprite and we can call this subject face now what I want to do is be able to create this in our assets folder so we can um, make it really easy to create different characters for our dialog box so to do this we just uh, create put an attribute above our class and it will be of create asset menu and in here it takes in uh, two uh, variables the file name and the menu name the order is optional so the file name, it can be new um, subject. And after this, um, in our right click menu, we're going to set the menu name to be, uh, let's say, create new subject. And 
and there you go that is all we need for our subject class so now back in unity after everything is done compiling in your subjects folder we can now create a new subject and we can call this uh, whatever we want so let's make our first speaker for our dialog box Jim me and in our inspector we could see all the variables we created in our scriptable object class and what we can do is set the name so of course I want the name to be Jimmy and we can set the border color to be let's say gray and the inside can be a lighter gray and uh, when we're using color variables um, the alpha is set to zero so if you run the game uh, using a color variable and you don't see um, a given object that is using that color variable then the alpha is probably at zero so yeah make sure your alpha is always at 255 when you are using color variables now for the subject face uh, I already have a bunch of assets for that uh, that I made once again in Piskel and we can just use subject one for this example now what we're going to do is create the C sharp class that will be the main driver for our dialog box so uh, we can create a new C sharp class in our scripts folder and call this dialog box and we can attach this to the canvas of our dialog box right over there and we can get to coding so we're going to create a bunch of variables uh, the first one is going to uh, be an array of a class that stores the dialog contents and the subject speaker so to do that we're going to create a public class underneath our main class here and we can call this dialog segment and in here we'll take in a and in our dialog segment class we're going to put in a public string and we're going to call this dialog and underneath this we're going to put a subject variable and we're going to call this the speaker and to make this visible in the editor we're going to do system.serializable now with our dialog segment class complete we're going to add in a public dialog segment array and this will be called dialog segments now underneath our dialog segments we can put in a space real quick so we can separate our variables and now we're going to need to get references to all of our um, dialog box UI elements so on the namespaces here we're going to start using unity engine.ui and since we're using text mesh pro we're going to be using tm pro as our next namespace now underneath our dialog segments variable we're going to create image references to our subject's face, the border of our dialog box, and the inside of our dialog box. Oh yeah, and don't forget the skip indicator so we can give a visual cue to the player for when they can just press the space bar and go to the next dialog. Now next up we're just going to need two references to the uh, two text mesh pro elements that we have. So the text mesh pro element uh, that is responsible for displaying the name and the text mesh pro element that is responsible for displaying the dialog. So we can do public and underneath our two variables here we can put in a space and a public float and we can call this uh, text speed. Those are all the public variables we will need for this. Now we're going to need two private variables. The first private variable will uh, contain whether or not the player can skip so we can call this can skip and the next variable will contain the index of our dialog segment and there you go those are all the variables we'll need for this to work now the next thing we're going to do underneath our update method we're going to create an i enumerator and this will be responsible for scrolling our text so going over each character in our given dialog segment and adding it on to our dialog display so i enumerator and we can call this um, play dialog and in here it can take in a string for the dialog and in here we're going to set our dialog display to uh, an empty text so we do dialog display dot set text string dot empty and now what we do is just simply iterate over each character in our past in dialog and uh, add that character to our dialog display and to add a delay for our uh, dialog display every time we add on the text we're going to do yield return new wait for seconds and here we'll do one divided by our text speed 
And there you go. That is all the code we need to um, add in all the text. But now what we need to do is set our can skip variable to true or false based on um, whether or not our enumerator is putting text into our dialog display. So at the very first line of our play dialog enumerator, we're going to set can skip to false, and we'll set can skip to true at the end of our enumerator. Actually, this variable shouldn't be called can skip. It should be called can continue. Okay, so yeah, can continue, not can skip. Okay, so that is our play dialog I enumerator. Now above this, we're going to create a function that will set the style of our dialog box uh, based off of our uh, speaker variable in our dialog segment. So we can do void set style. And in here, we'll take in a uh, subject class and, we'll t and this will be called uh, speaker. And in here, we're going to set the speaker face display. So if the speaker face display on our subject is null, we don't want it to just be a just a floating white box. What we want to do is set it to be completely transparent so it's like there's there's an unknown. So what we can do is if speaker dot uh, where is it dot subject face is equal to null. If our subject face is null, now we're going to do speaker face display dot color equals a new color and we're just going to pass in zero to each property here so it is just completely transparent if we do have a subject face then we're going to do speaker face display dot sprite equals speaker dot subject face and the speaker face display color will be white so equals color dot white now what we're going to do is set the color of our dialog box border. So dialog box border dot color equals speaker dot border color and of our dialog box inner. So dialog box inner dot color equals speaker dot inner color. And now we need to set up the name. So speaker name display dot set text and we'll pass in the speaker dot name or subject name there. So there we set up all the customizable features of our dialog box. We, we set the name, we set the color of our dialog box, the border and the inside and the face display. Now in our start function, before we get into our update method, we're going to first set the style of our dialog box to be the first uh, speaker in our dialog segment. So to do that, we just do set style and as an argument, we do dialog segments zero dot speaker. And after that, we're going to run our um, play dialog I enumerator. So we do start protein, play dialog, and in here we do dialog segments zero dot dialog. And now in our update method, we're now going to handle uh, the continuing functionality. So to do this, we do if input dot get key down key code dot space. So we check if uh, we press the space button and we check if we can continue and in here we're going to increment our dialog index so a dialog index plus plus and underneath this we're going to check if our dialog index is equal to the length of our dialog segments so if dialog index is equal to dialog segments dot length then we've reached the end of our dialog so we can return out of this function and we can disable our dialog box game object so we can do game object dot set active false now what if our dialog index is not equivalent to the length of our array then that's pretty simple we can just take these two functions that we run in our start from method put them underneath our if statement and instead of using zero as the argument in our um, index for our dialog segments then we'll use our dialog index variable now for the very last thing uh, in our dialog box class we need to set the activity of our skip indicator and that's pretty simple we just do skip indicator dot enabled equals can continue and there you go we're now done our entire dialog box class so if we go back in Unity to set up some variables so we set the speaker face we set the dialog box border the inner and the skip indicator now we're gonna set up the name display and our dialog content display and let's set the text speed to be 25. That's a reasonable speed for um, dialogue. 
Now we can get to the fun part, which is adding in dialogue segments. So we're going to put in two, and what we can do now is we can just put in whatever we want. And we could just take Jimmy here and put him as the subject in both of these dialogues. And if we just hit save and play, we should see it work. We should see Jimmy say, hello, my name is Jimmy. And if we hit space, I want to take over the world, we could see our skip indicator. And once we hit space again, it's going to disable. And there you go. That is how you create a dialog box in Unity. It is very simple, not too hard, and it is easily customizable for uh, your needs. So yeah, that is all I have for this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you learn something new, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>